Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, we are going to discuss the design of the lead compensator. The lead compensator is designed to adjust the time domain specification of our closed loop system. The PI compensation and the lag compensation both are used to eliminate the steady state error in your system. But lead compensation is used to improve the time domain specifications of your closed loop system. So first of all we will see the steps which are used for the design of the lead compensator. So the first step uh, for the design of the lead compensator is that, that from the performance specifications determine the desired location of the dominant closed loop poles. So that is the first step. Once you determine the position of the dominant closed loop poles, then draw the root locus of the uncompensated system and determine whether the roots are on the root locus or not. And if they are not, if they are on the root locus, it means with the adjustment of the gain k, you can get the desired closed loop position. But if the closed loop poles are not on the root locus then you will have to compensate the angle deficiency with the help of the lead compensator right so by drawing the root locus of the uncompensated system determine whether or not the gain compensator can yield desired closed loop poles if not calculate the angle deficiency and this angle must be contributed by the lead compensator once you determine the angle, then assume the lead compensator that is given by this expression that is the gain of your lead compensator is Kc. This is uh, defining the zero and this is defining the pole of your lead compensator. And this transfer function can be written like that. That Kc into S plus 1 by tau taking tau uh, common out from here and alpha tau uh, common out from here. So alpha will be cancelled out with this one. So you will be left with this transfer function. So this is the position of the zero. So I'm going to write it a equal to Zc. And this is the position of the pole. So let's suppose that is equal to Pc. So Zc is equal to 1 by tau and Pc is equal to 1 by alpha tau. So this is the pole zero map of the mm, compensator. A zero is introduced at 1 by tau. That is this one. And the pole is introduced at 1 by alpha tau. So as the pole is on the left side of your zero so this alpha must be uh, between zero and one because if the alpha will be lesser than one then your pole will be on the left hand side of your zero so after assuming the compensator transfer function you are going to determine the position of the zero and the pole looking at the angle that is to be compensated by your lead compensator so alpha and t are determined from the angle deficiency and the kc that is the gain of your lead compensator is determined from the requirement of the open loop gain of your system. After this the fourth step is the, if the static error constant are not uh, constants are not specified determine the location of the pole and zero of the lead compensator so that it contributes the necessary angle deficiency. If the static error constants are specified then you will have to just look at the position of the uh, zero and accordingly according to the error that is specified you will look at the position of the pole. If no other requirements are imposed on the system try to make the value of the alpha as large as possible. Large value of the alpha generally results in a larger value of the static velocity error which is desirable because we know that for the ramp input the steady state error is 1 by kv higher the value of kv the steady state error will be reduced so kv that is the static velocity error is calculated with the help of this expression right so uh, in this uh, if we look at the uh, this part this is the compensator uh, transfer uh, function so applying the limit um, over uh, this compensator transfer function so we can um, get um, 
this portion will be zero if we apply the limit this part will be zero so what we will be left with we will be left with kc into 1 by tau divided by 1 by um, alpha tau so uh, this can be written as kc into alpha applying the limit over the transfer function of your compensator right so now um, if we apply this limit over here uh, the s is approaching to zero over the compensator transfer function so that will be equal to kc into alpha so limit will be left uh, over this one s into g of s so you can write uh, this transfer function like this okay and the fifth step that is last step determine the value of the kc using the magnitude condition so these are the steps to design the lead compensator okay now um, how we can determine the position of the pole and the zero there are two commonly used methods there are infinite many uh, solutions for this one you can select the position of the uh, zero and the pole um, such that uh, the time uh, the required specifications are met and uh, infinite combinations are possible to compensate the angle deficiency but i am going to discuss the one um, which will give you the maximum value of the static error constant so that uh, your steady state error is also minimized so what is the procedure let's suppose that this is the desired position of the um, dominant closed loop poles so first of all you are going to draw a line which is parallel to the real axis and passing through that pole let's suppose that pole is p and then you are going to join the pole with the origin with the help of a line so that is this one right so first step is this one second step is this one and the third step is that you are going to bisect the angle which is formed by uh, between this line and the line joining the origin once you bisect this angle then you are going to draw two lines at the angle of uh, phi by 2 um, from this line right so um, this is the bisector line and here you can see this line and this line they are at the angle of phi by 2 phi by 2 in this direction and phi by 2 in this direction so what is phi phi is basically the angle deficiency which you are going to calculate with the help of the position of the desired um, closed loop uh, position right so uh, by calculating that angle deficiency you are going to draw these two lines and where these two lines will intersect the negative real axis those points will be considered as the um, points where you are going to introduce the compensated zero and the pole so these are the steps first of all draw the line join the pole with the origin bisect the angle draw the line of uh, phi by 2 and intersecting with the negative real axis are the desired uh, zeros and compensators okay so those are shown over here this is a diagram from your textbook okay another method uh, that is a simplified method but it is not optimized because it will not give you the um, high value of the static error constant it may or may not give so uh, that method is cancel one pole of the system with the compensator zero right and determine the position of the pole of the compensator by the angle uh, condition and just uh, apply the compensator with that um, uh, value of the pole and the uh, zero okay now let's um, look at the design of the lead compensator with the help of an example so let's suppose that uh, we have um, this system uh, that is shown in front of you this is the feed forward transfer function g of s right and it, the unity feedback system h of s is equal to uh, one in this case and we want to design a compensator that will be introduced over here let's suppose that is d of s so uh, such that that um, the zeta the damping factor of the resulting uh, loop is equal to 0.5 and the natural frequency is um, 3 radian per second okay so the first step for the design is that we are going to look at the uh, position of the closed loop pole of the original or the uncompensated system so we know the uh, transfer function of the system that is this one g of s so we can uh, write down the closed loop transfer function that will be equal to g of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s and h of s is equal to 1 so using this expression uh, we can uh, write down the expression for the closed loop transfer function so that is g of s divided by 1 plus g of s so this will be the closed loop transfer function and if we um, factorize this uh, 
expression so you are going to get um, uh, these poles for this closed loop system so if we uh, sketch the root locus of this system here you can see that this pole one pole is at the origin s is equal to zero and the other pole is at minus one so you can see from here that um, this pole is over here and um, this pole is over here so the root locus is like that that uh, when you will increase the gain k if it would have been a simple there would have been, have been a simple uh, proportional controller so when you will change that k so these poles will uh, move like this and for a certain value of the gain um, that is um, uh, this one so uh, your closed loop poles are at this position right at um, uh, from here here you can see this is the pole this pole is at minus 0.5 and plus minus 3.1225 j so that is this one right this one and this one so um, this is the position of the closed loop poles for this uncompensated system and what is the uh, natural frequency over here if you compare it um, with the standard um, second order system to zeta omega n s plus omega n square so omega n square is equal to 10 so with this comparison you can find out the natural frequency of the uncompensated system and uh, similarly by comparing to zeta omega n um, with 1 uh, because you have 1 over here you can find out the damping factor so damping factor for um, this uh, uh, closed loop uh, pole pair conjugate complex pair so these will be at the zeta line that will be equal to 0.1581 okay now um, let's look at that where these closed loop pole uh, poles should be so that we have the zeta is equal to 0.5 and the natural frequency is 3 radian per second so now let's um, uh, take this equation s square plus 2 zeta omega ns plus omega n square this one and uh, we use the parameters which are desired so desired zeta is 0 0.5 and the omega uh, n is 3 and this omega n is 3 square so this is the um, characteristic equation of the desired poles to get the desired time domain specifications okay so from here we will get uh, this equation and if we um, calculate the poles uh, find out the poles with the help of this one from this characteristic equation so the pole uh, poles comes out to be this one so this is the desired position of the uh, poles closed loop poles so now if i uh, locate those poles over here these are the desired closed loop poles but the actual poles are over here right so um, there is a difference the desired pole this one is not at the root locus so now what we will have to do simple gain adjustment will not work because if we change the gain k so these poles will move over this root locus right but our desired poles are over here so we will have to introduce a compensator simple gain k will not work right so looking at um, uh, the root locus you can uh, finalize that uh, either the compensator is required or not if the simple uh, if these desired poles are over the root locus simple gain adjustment will work but as these closed loop poles are not at the root locus so you will have to introduce a compensator to meet the uh, design and to meet the desired time domain specifications okay so this is our desired closed loop pole and uh, if i look at its position its uh, real part is minus 1.5 and its imaginary part is this one right and if i um, join this one with this one uh, the origin so this will be equal to omega n because it's a second order um, pole uh, one pole is over here and the other pole will be over here a second order equation so second order dynamics will define all the parameters so omega n is equal to um, 3 over here and as we desire the zeta equal to 0.5 so taking the cos inverse of 0.5 you will get the angle of 60 degree so this line will be making the angle of uh, 60 degree and the omega n is equal to 3 right so this is the position of the desired closed loop pole which is not at the root locus of your uncompensated system so we will be introducing a compensator in such a way that, that now your root locus passes through this point then you will get the desired time domain specification okay so now uh, let's calculate what is the angle deficiency because we need the uh, pole at this point so uh, our open loop poles are at this point s is equal to 0 and s is equal to minus 1 so first of all we will look at the uh, angle um, because of this pole with the desired closed loop pole position okay so let's draw a line over here and let's calculate this angle so how to calculate this angle you can consider this triangle 
right and you can calculate you know about this angle so total angle is 180 degree so from 180 degree if you subtract the 60 degree so this will be 120 degree so this is the uh, angle because of the pole which is sitting at the origin uh, from uh, the uh, desired closed loop pole okay so that is 120 degree now let's calculate the angle uh, because of the second pole uh, second open loop pole with the desired closed loop pole position so that is this one right so we need to calculate um, this angle okay so how to calculate this angle so if i zoom this and um, then you can observe you can uh, consider uh, this triangle right this triangle and in this triangle your um, this base is equal to uh, 0.5 and this um, this portion is equal to 2.5981 so using this information and the tangent um, uh, property from your uh, trigonometry so tangent inverse of uh, this um, y and this one let's is x y over x will give you um, this angle right and uh, uh, this angle so subtracting it from 180 you will get this one so um, if we calculate this angle over here this will be equal to 100.894 the 60 degrees for this one not for this right so this angle is uh, equal to 100.894 so now we were calculating the angle deficiency so uh, this is our desired closed loop pole so we will um, look at the angle of gfs into hfs that is the open loop transfer function at this point this is our s1 that is the desired closed loop pole and that should be the multiple of plus minus 180 degree if it is the part of the root locus so we will apply this angle condition and then we will see that how much angle difference is there so our open loop transfer function is 10 over s into s plus 1 so the angle contribution by this pole and the angle contribution by this pole right at uh, the desired closed loop pole so first of all we are going to calculate this angle so this will be equal to 180 minus this one and that comes out to be 120 degree that is this one and then um, the angle contribution of this pole so that will be 180 minus this one and this we have obtained uh, from this triangle okay so now um, the total angle at um, the desired pole with uh, because of your open loop uh, transfer function so minus 120 minus 100.894 so that is this one and this should have been uh, minus 180 right it should be minus 180 so what is the angle compensation that is required 40.894 degree so this is the angle deficiency and your compensator will have to fulfill this deficiency so that uh, your root locus passes through the desired position of the closed loop holes okay so now uh, moving towards step 3 now let's calculate the position of the uh, zero and the pole of the compensator okay so uh, first of all um, just mark this point this is our desired pole position p right and we are going to draw a horizontal line parallel to the real axis okay so that will be passing through this point and uh, then the next step is to join your pole with the origin so this line you can see your pole has been combined with uh, has been joined with the origin and you are going to mark the angle this angle will be 120 degree and this angle will be 180 degree because this is the omega n and the zeta is equal to 0.5 so cos inverse of zeta is equal to 60 degree so this angle is 60 degree therefore this angle will be 120 degree okay after um uh, this you are going to draw the angle bisector of this portion so this angle is 120 degree because if this angle is of um, 60 degrees so this angle will be of 60 degrees so this angle will be of 120 degrees so bisector of this one will make the 60 degree angle over here and the 60 degree angle over here so that you can see over here in this diagram if we draw the angle bisector uh, this is the angle bisector line so this angle is 60 degree this angle is um, 60 degree and if we draw the perpendicular line over here so definitely this is the um, position of the pole over the negative real axis that is minus 1.5 okay now let's draw the two lines equal to um, taking the angle half of the angle that is required um, to compensate so total angle is this one so dividing it by 2 20.447 is the angle that is to be compensated so this line will be at the angle of uh, 20.447 and similarly this line will be at the angle of 20.447 from this bisector line right so what will be this angle now um, 
this angle from here the bisector angle is 60 degree and plus this angle you will get the angle of this line from this one and uh, what is the angle of this line so this angle from here to here is 60 degree minus uh, this 5 by 2 you will get um, this angle so i have sketched it over here let's consider the uh, first of all uh, this line right so um, this angle is you can see the 60 degree right and uh, this angle is 20.447 so what will be this total angle this total angle will be equal to 80.477 okay and if you know this angle this angle and you know this angle 60 degree so you can find out this angle by subtracting it from 180 degree so you will get this angle because sum of all the angles in a triangle should be equal to 180 degree okay so um, after getting this one uh, after getting the information of all of these angles um, this side information is known because this is equal to omega n right and uh, that is equal to 3 so um, we know this angle and the opposite side we know this angle and that is 80.477 so we can find out what is this x let's suppose this is x so we, we can get this point by using the law of sines so law of sine can be applied so that is this 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 distance is um, x so x divided by the sine of the opposite angle so that is this one that should be equal to 3 divided by the sine of this angle so from here you can find out the value of the x and x uh, will be equal to 1 by alpha t that is the position of the uh, pole so your pole of the compensator will be um, over here right so um, this is the position of that one okay now let's uh, look at the uh, position of the um, zero right so um, uh, uh, how we can determine that one let's consider now this triangle the second one uh, this one so we know that this angle is 20.447 so this angle will be now 39.553 because we will have to subtract this this angle from the 60 degree and if we know this angle this angle is already known 60 degree you can find out this angle so now you can apply the law of sine and um, um, here you can see 3 divided by sine of this angle should be equal to um, now uh, let's suppose this is x so x divided by uh, sine of this angle so if you simplify you will get x is equal to this one so this 1 by tau should be equal to 1.9372 so you have calculated this point and you have calculated um, this point which is the position of the um, uh, required uh, this is the position of the pole and zero required for the compensator okay so now we can uh, write down the compensator transfer function so compensator the zero uh, will be at uh, this position right so let me mark the zero over here and the pole will be um, at this position right so now we know the information of these two so zero is over here pole is over here and what will be the alpha alpha is the ratio of zc and pc right so that will be equal to 0 0.4170 so we can use this equation of the compensator transfer function we have all the values this is the position of the uh, zero and this is the position of the pole so only kc is now unknown so um, now we have introduced this compensator and the transfer function of this compensator is this one okay now after that um, we are going to find out the uh, magnitude of uh, sorry uh, this gain kc with the help of the magnitude condition that uh, by equating the uh, magnitude of this um, part with uh, 1 right because we know that 1 plus g of s into h of s that should be equal to 0 so the magnitude comes out to be 1 so applying the uh, magnitude condition so uh, the transfer function of this compensator is um, this one right and uh, into the um, this one right so this should be equal to 1 at the uh, desired closed loophole so this is the desired closed loophole so solving it uh, for kc uh, rearranging you will get this equation and if you solve it for this value of the s the kc will be equal to 1.2287 so now the lead compensator transfer function is um, this one right and the open loop um, com compensated system will be equal to the compensator transfer function into the um, system transfer function so um, this is the um, compensator and this is the system so this is the compensated open loop tra uh, transfer function and then you can uh, find out the closed loop transfer function by using 1 plus g of uh, sorry g uh, 
GFS divided by 1 plus GFS so that will give you the closed loop um, transfer function so that is this one so it's 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 a third order system there are the two complex poles which we have set at the desired position and one um, uh, real pole over here so if we factorize this equation you will get um, these position of the poles these two are the complex conjugate pair and this one is the uh, real pole now so third pole is very close um, to the or uh, to the zero that we are going to add in our system so now first of all uh, look at the uh, root locus of the compensated system so these are the two poles uh, one pole is at zero and the other one is at minus one these are the system poles okay and we have introduced um, zero uh, over here and a pole over here right and that zero and pole have changed the root locus now instead of going uh, it uh, going like this the root locus is going to change its path and it's going to uh, pass through our desired closed loop poles Th this is the position of the desired closed loop hole this one and this one right so um this is the desired position and that is minus 1.5 and 2.5981 and here you can see a root locus is passing through that one by the introduction of this zero and uh, uh, this pole and um, the closed loop um, pole that is at this position that will um, not affect uh, the uh, transient response significantly because it will um, uh, it is very close to the zero so third pole is close to the added zero so will not affect the transient uh, response and the transient response which uh, is basically because of this dominant pair of the closed loop pole second order uh, pole and now we have changed the root locus such that it passes through that one so um, for the selected gain uh, we will get the uh, desired time domain response okay now let's calculate the uh, static uh, velocity error for this compensator so that is equal to uh, this one if if we just place all of these values and simplify we will get um, kb equal to this one okay now let's uh, look at that how we can um, uh, find out the position of the pole and zero by the simplified method so i am going to repeat the step one uh, step two uh, three and four sorry with the help of the method two so uh, in this uh, this is our um, open loop transfer function and the system pole is at um, uh, minus one and zero and um, one pole of the system is over here at zero and the other pole is um, at s is equal to minus one so what we are going to do we are going to cancel this pole of the system by introducing the zero directly over here right so whatever was the angle contribution of that pole with the desired pole now that is cancelled so now what is the um, angle of the rest of the poles um, uh, if we are going to introduce a pole over here that is a system pole so this is going to make the angle of 120 degree so where should be the other pole that should make the angle of 60 degree right so that uh, will have to be introduced at um, this point at s is equal to minus 3 right so if we introduce a pole over here so this angle uh, will be 60 degree so 120 and 160 that will be 180 so that will make the uh, required condition that angle should be 180 degree or its multiple so angle condition is um, quickly satisfied if we uh, cancel out the pole of the system that was present at s is equal to oh, minus one by introducing the zero over here okay so now uh, this is the position of the um, zero we have introduced the zero at s is equal to minus one by cancelling this pole and uh, this is the position of the pole that has been introduced over here such that this angle is equal to um, 60 degree right so um, this is the transfer function of our compensator and the gain kc can be calculated with the help of the magnitude condition that uh, the magnitude of uh, this compensator into the system transfer function should be equal to one at the desired position of the closed loop pole okay so now if we simplify this one if we re rearrange it for the k so this comes out to be this one so k is equal to 0.9 so uh, this is basically the k okay so now what will be the compensator transfer function compensated transfer function is kc into uh, this part so we have calculated it from here so this is the transfer function of our lead compensator and what will be the open loop compensated transfer function uh, compensator into the system so this is the compensator this one is the system so we get um, this one is the compensated transfer function and if you look at the closed loop transfer function because this is in um, uh, the uh, feed forward or the open loop transfer function so uh, the closed loop transfer function will be let's suppose that this is g1s 
so g1 s divided by 1 plus g1 s so you will get uh, this expression okay now you can find out the kv the uh, velocity um, error so by applying the limit s is approaching to 0 over this one s into open loop transfer function and the open loop transfer function is this one so um, taking the value so this comes out to be 3 so if you remember from the previous case the kv was equal to 5 from this method this is an easy method you are getting k is equal to 3 but your steady state error for the ramp input uh, will be higher for uh, this particular case you are meeting the time domain specifications no doubt because your desired pole is at the um, correct position and your root locus is passing through that one you have the pole um, desired pole at this position but your steady state error over here will be high because the kv is the smaller one so the first method that we have discussed for the uh, design of the position of the uh, pole and zero of the compensated that is a better matter an optimized matter so the kv of the method two is less than the um, kv of the method one and uh, steady state error is the inverse of that um, kv for the unit ramp input so steady state error in the first method will be lesser than the steady state error of the second method here i have plotted the i have taken the figure from your textbook for the uh, compensated and uncompensated uh, step response so um, this is the step response of your uh, compensated system uh, using method one and this is the step response of the uncompensated um, uh, system and uh, sorry um, th this is the step response using the uh, method two and the uncompensated system response is this one okay so um, now if we look at the ramp uh, unit ramp response so uh, this is the unit ramp input to your system okay and uh, here is the response and this is uh, for kv equal to 5.131 that is method 1 and from the method 2 you have um, this response so here you can see the steady state error for the second method is larger as compared to the steady state error for the method number one because in that the kv is equal to 5.31 and it is higher than the uh, static voltage uh, static velocity error in the method number two so uh, if the time uh, if these static error are defined uh, then you will have to select the position of the pole and zero accordingly otherwise when if these are not specified always try to uh, use the method one for the design of the lead compensator so that um, along with the time domain specification you have the minimum steady state error the basic purpose of the lead compensator is to meet the time uh, domain uh, specification the lag compensator is used for the steady state error so if i summarize the lecture we have seen the steps that how we can design the lead compensator and we have discussed an example for the lead compensator by two methods and um, I know I uh, hope that you will be able to design the lead compensator for a given open loop transfer function and the time domain specifications. That's all from this video. Thank you very much.